Welcome back to Side Hustle, and this week we're going to talk about how and when to pivot. Yes, coming at you from my boyfriend's house. Um, I just thought it would be a fun change of scenery, so yeah, this is a different place than I usually film. Yay! So last week we talked about how to get past the post-launch slump. Um, and pivoting is a huge part of that. So if you haven't watched last week's video, then go back and watch that and then come back and watch this. So as a general rule of thumb, your first version of an idea is not going to be your best one, generally, unless you're like a genius who has just brilliant ideas spring out of their brain. So the way I like to think about it is once things start to get too comfortable or easy, um, once you start getting used to the structure that you have with your project, that's going to be a good time to think about pivoting and iterating your project in some way. So with my podcast, what that looked like is the original concept of the LadyCast was that it was going to be an interview-based show. So every two weeks, the show would just be an interview with somebody cool. Um, and I did that for like five episodes, I think, until I started thinking that, you know, this was easy, but um, I think that it could be a lot more than that. So I started adding just little segments at the beginning and end, um, talking to the listeners or inviting other people on. So if you listen back to the last couple of episodes, I actually have my friend Julia on talking about a newsletter that she does called A Woman to Know, which is very uh, closely aligned with the, uh, I guess, mission of what the Lady Cast is, which is highlighting super awesome women um, that you should know. So a couple weeks ago, I got her together and we both recorded like five segments um, just in batch and I am now producing one at a time to put into a podcast. So now all of my episodes have the main interview portion, but they also have a little extra woman to know. And I'm slowly trying to add more and more little segments so that the complete product feels more like a produced show rather than just like, hey, here's this conversation I had. So that's just one small example of how I have tweaked things. You can also do this, um, you know, not just with a blog, but, or not just with a podcast, obviously, but if you have a blog or if you are selling a product, if you have a business, you can start thinking about, um, you know, how can you expand your project um, to make it more comprehensive or to add more dimension to it in some way. So if you have a blog, you can consider, you know, adding regular features or segments that um, are like tangentially related, but not exactly related. So that just sort of broadens your scope, if that makes sense. So um, for example, a friend of mine had a street style blog in college and it was super successful and everybody loved it. All the blog was, was they would just go around town and take pictures of people who were dressed super cool. And that was awesome and that was successful and people loved it. But after a while that got too comfortable so they decided to start doing um, profiles of people who were particularly well dressed in town. So they would follow them around every single day for a week and shoot their outfits and then at the end of the week they would do an interview with them to talk about you know what their specific fashion um, philosophy is and how they approach fashion, how they pro approach dressing themselves. So um, you know that's just another example of how you can broaden your ideas and kind of pivot your focus a little bit to make it more um, exciting for you and also for your readers or you know your community that's following you. I like to always keep a list going um, in my mind or on paper in my bullet journal. Check out my bullet journal video with ideas for potential expansions of my podcast and also just sort of the general brand of the lady cast. And um, at any given time, I'm juggling maybe four or five ideas of how I could make it better. The more you get into the habit of thinking this way, the more aware you'll be um, when good ideas surface. And uh, you know, you can just be walking around and be like, wow, that's a really great idea. I should consider using that for my project. It makes it a lot easier to be inspired by the people around you and the things around you um, if you're kind of in that mindset already. 
if you do have that list, if you start uh, creating that list, it's a great idea to um, slowly plan out the feasibility of various ideas. You know, just like take one step in each direction and um, see how that feels. I like to take a ton of baby steps in little different directions and just see which one feels the most feasible, the most possible, and also feels right for me and for the project. An example of this is um, a campaign that I'm actually running with my podcast right now um, with stickers. So I am trying to kind of get some buzz on the internet around my podcast. So I had a bunch of stickers made with the LadyCast logo and I also had some stickers made um, that say do the thing. So if you want to check out the stickers, I'll leave a link in the description box. So I created a Google form that um, invited people to put in their name and address, the email address, and then if they tweet or Facebook post or Instagram about the podcast, they could leave the link to that post in the Google form and I will send them stickers for free. And I wasn't sure how this was going to work. I had seen a friend of mine do this similar thing with her own project and it seemed to work pretty well and it was also really fun. So um, I just ordered 10 stickers of each of the two designs, so 20 total. And um, so that's sort of, this is sort of the beta run of that to see kind of what the demand is for that. So that's just an example. Um, it's been going pretty well so far. People really like them. So I think I might re-up my sticker supply and kind of keep going forward with that. A final tip that I have for iteration is to ask your audience what they want from you. Um, because ultimately what you're doing is serving them with content, with a service, with a product. So if you find yourself in a point where you really do feel like you need to pivot, but you can't figure out exactly which direction you want to take it in, or if you're trying to decide multiple directions, um, ask your users. Uh, create a survey. You can use something like SurveyMonkey or um, even a Twitter poll. I've done a Twitter poll before using the LadyCast. Uh, it's helpful to hear what the people who are most invested in your product want from you. Try not to ask for too much from them. Nobody wants to fill out like a multi-page survey, but uh, simple yes or no questions and demographic questions. Figure out who your users are and then figure out what they want and that is going to make you successful. All right, that's it for me this week. I hope that you found this video helpful and um, if you have any questions, please comment them down below um, or tweet me. I'm at Alex Laughs and my podcast is at The LadyCast. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Femsplain on YouTube. I will talk to you guys next week.